Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're about to take a deep dive into one of the biggest true crime cases in the universe, or at least on our part of the planet. From the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. Welcome back, everyone. We're diving into a case that I know a lot of you have been requesting, the Murdoff family murders, and we're going deep beyond those crazy headlines. Yeah, this wasn't just another news story. This one, this one had it all. Power, secrets, betrayal. Okay, so small town South Carolina, June 2021. Picture this, a sprawling estate. The kind of place that just screams dynasty, you know. Exactly. And that's where we find Maggie and Paul Murdaugh, wife and son of this big time attorney, Alex Murdaugh, shot dead. And get this, Alex is the one who calls 911. But to really understand just how insane this all is, you got to know the Murdaugh's weren't just some family. They practically ran that corner of South Carolina. They were what, like legal royalty down there? For three generations, they were the top prosecutors, their law firm, Mm -hmm. legendary. Their name, it opened doors, it stayed shut for everyone else. So we're not talking about a family, we're talking about an institution. And then this double homicide hits right on their land. It's like something out of a true crime novel. Only this time, it was real life. And then it gets crazier, right? Because the husband, Alex, the one who made that 911 call, he ends up convicted of the murders. And the prosecution built this whole case, painted him as this desperate man drowning in debt, trying to cover his tracks. So he killed his wife and son to distract from his financial problem. That was their theory. But hold on. Because I'm already thinking back to everything else that came out. Like, didn't this whole thing start with Alex claiming he'd been shot in a roadside ambush? Oh, yeah. About nine months before the murders that happened. Claims some random guy just shot him. And that turned out to be what? A lie? A big one. He made it up. Why? To get life insurance money. Or at least that's what he said. Even roped in some guy named Curtis Smith to help him stage it. Wait, he tried to fake his own death (laughs) with this Curtis character. And this is before his wife and son are actually killed. I mean, talk about a twist. It makes you question everything, right? Was it a cry for help? Or a test run for something darker? It's like, how do you even process that? And here's the thing. To really unravel this whole thing, we need to go back even further. To 2019, there was this boating accident. This is where it all starts? This is where the threads start to come together. Yeah. Yeah, February 2019. We're talking late one night. Paul Murdaugh, the son, he's allegedly driving this boat. And it was speeding right. Oh, yeah. And, well, it crashes. This wasn't just a little accident either. A young woman... Mallory Beach, she was friends with Paul. She's thrown from the boat. It took a week to find her body. Tragic. Just awful. And that's when those whispers about the Murdoch family, their power, they got a lot louder. People started to connect the dots. Because there were these questions. Well, yeah. Was Paul even driving the boat? Some witnesses said yes, some said no. And with the Murdoch name attached, you know, people were suspicious. Exactly. And it all comes to a head because the Beach family, they filed a wrongful death lawsuit. And that's when things really blew up. It became huge. Suddenly, everyone's accusing the Murdaughs of getting preferential treatment, saying the police didn't do their job properly because of who they were dealing with. So it became about more than just the accident itself. It was about power and influence. Exactly. It was in the newspapers, all over social media. This family, they'd always been untouchable. And now, now everyone's questioning everything about them. And that's where those dog kennels, where Maggie and Paul were found, that's where it all gets even more unsettling. You think this was revenge for the boat crash? (laughs) No, you can't ignore the timing, can you? And then there's the fact that there were reports of threats against Paul after the accident. Threats. Seriously. Yeah. From what I understand, investigators were told that, let's just say, not everyone was sad about what happened to Paul. Tensions were high. Wow. And think about it. Those kennels? They were kind of isolated from the main house. Someone could have easily waited for him there. If they wanted to silence him, make a statement. It's chilling, but we have to consider all the angles, right? What if this was just random? A robbery or... It's possible, but unlikely. There wasn't any force entry, no signs of a struggle. And as far as we know, nothing was stolen. Exactly. And let's be real, double homicides. They're usually personal. 
random violence, especially in a place like that, it's not unheard of. But it doesn't quite fit. It doesn't. So we've got the revenge angle, but what about everything else? Alex Murdaugh's drug problem, the shady financial stuff. You're thinking those could be connected. Well, there were those rumors, weren't there? Okay. About the Murdaugh's, their connections. To the drug trade. Yeah. I mean, they had power, money. Maybe they got in over their heads. It's possible. It wouldn't be the first time a powerful family got mixed up with the wrong people. So maybe a drug deal gone wrong, or Alex owed someone money. And, and they went after his family. Again, we're speculating here. Right. But we do know Alex was involved in some shady stuff. Remember Curtis Smith, the guy from the fake shooting? Oh, yeah. That whole thing was strange. Exactly. It shows a level of desperation. Yeah. And who knows who else he was mixed up with? It's like we're missing pieces of the puzzle. What if investigators, what if they were so focused on Alex that they missed something else? Tunnel vision. It yeah. happens. In this case, it was huge. Uh -huh. Everyone was watching. It's possible they zeroed in on Alex and never looked back. So where does that leave us? With a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. To get any closer to the truth, we have to dig into what we do know. The evidence. All right, let's talk evidence. We've got all these theories, right? Revenge, drugs, maybe something else entirely. But what do we actually know? Well, it starts back at those dog kennels. Remember, they found two different types of shell casings there. Meaning two guns. Two guns, yeah. Which suggests, well, could have been two shooters. A hit. Is that what you're <laughs> thinking? Possibly, yeah. But one person could use two different guns, too. Maybe to throw off the investigation. Or, I don't know, make it look like something it wasn't. Right, make it look like something more involved than just... Exactly. But then there's the whole digital side of things, cell phones, GPS, all that stuff. You'd think that would make solving a case like this easier, but... There's a whole other layer, isn't it? Like you said, phones track everything these days. Mm. Where you go, who you talk to, even what you search for online. If investigators got a hold of Paul or Maggie's phones... They have a gold mine of information. Exactly. But did they ever release any of that? Not that I've seen. And believe me, I've dug around. It's strange, though. Very strange. I mean, think about it. This case, it was everywhere. You couldn't escape it. You'd think they'd want to use every bit of evidence they had to, you know, reassure people. To prove they got the right guy. Exactly. So why hold back? Unless... Unless there's something in that data that tells a different story. Something that points away from Alex. Makes you think. It does. And here we are, all these years later, still trying to piece it all together. It's like, where do you even go from here? That's the thing about these kinds of cases, right? The ones that grab you, the ones you can't let go of. Sometimes the answers are never easy. Sometimes the truth, it stays hidden. The Murdaugh murders, they had it all. A powerful family, a shocking crime, and more twists and turns than you could count. And yet, even with the guilty verdict, even with Alex Murdaugh behind bars, there are still so many unanswered questions. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll be back next time with another case, another story that needs unraveling. Until then, keep digging, keep asking questions, and never, ever stop searching for the truth. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. So they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic, very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. They said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point on narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? for so long with multiple new episodes every single day we're not just telling stories we're seeking justice listen now on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts just search for hidden killers with tony brewski